In this time of uncertainty with the coronavirus looming, we're hoping more clients will take advantage of technology and continue their litigation by utilizing remote reporting. Zoom conferencing makes it super easy for them to conduct depositions while avoiding in-person contact. Our CalDRA has had seminars recently that I hope you've had the opportunity to take advantage of. If not, here are a few highlights that I found helpful implementing in my business. What is remote reporting? Remote reporting can be accomplished with many combinations of people present, live or appearing via video conference. For example, the stenographer can either be together with the deponent, with counsel appearing from different locations, or every party, including the deponent, could appear remotely from their own location, so everyone is only virtually in the same room. The question comes up a lot if it's legal for a reporter to swear in the witness remotely. There is no prohibition from swearing in a third party or expert witness remotely. The code does, however, state that the reporter must be in the presence of a party witness. However, it is our understanding that this requirement may be waived by the parties in writing. It will be your responsibility to get that on the record before beginning, should the parties wish to proceed remotely. So, how to get started? The good news for you is that usually your agency or client will set up the session via whatever software they use. There are many platforms that can be utilized, such as Live Litigation, Skype, or GoToMeeting. But in my business, we use Zoom whenever possible. We find it basic, easy, and reliable. We send all parties, including the reporter, a link to click on, and away you go. Now that we've covered that, what else do you need to report remotely? You need to bring an extra viewing device, like an iPad or an extra laptop with built-in webcam. You can use an external webcam if you prefer, but it's not required. Some additional items that are optional but recommended are a speakerphone or an external Bluetooth speaker, like the one pictured here. That way you can better hear the parties. Additionally, you may want a separate Wi-Fi hotspot or Ethernet cable to ensure a strong internet connection. If you choose to use your cell phone as a substitute for any of these items, such as the speakerphone or Wi-Fi hotspot, make sure your phone is on Do Not Disturb mode so that it doesn't interfere with your internet connection or your audio quality. Once you've clicked on the link to join the meeting, you have some choices to make. Do you want to be seen by the attorneys? It's up to you. You can choose to join with or without video, but it might be helpful if you're visible to the attorneys when you're trying to interrupt or to ask a clarifying question. Another consideration is which view to be in, gallery view versus speaker view. Speaker view means you just see one person at a time, whoever's speaking. Gallery view is a little bit like the Brady Bunch. You can see everyone simultaneously in smaller boxes. I recommend gallery view. It's actually helpful for speaker identification, especially when crosstalk occurs. Another option you may want to consider is whether to join with your laptop or your iPad's internal audio or with a separate audio line, such as using a dial-in number. I recommend utilizing a separate dial-in number for audio as a redundancy and because the quality of the audio is generally better on a dedicated phone line. Just be sure to mute your Zoom audio when using a separate audio line. It happens frequently that attendees aren't aware of this step, which will cause terrible feedback, so remind other attendees to mute their redundant microphones as well. Here are some great tips for troubleshooting if you run into any hiccups along the way. Have a stipulation handy to put on the record if the parties don't provide one. Now, how to handle exhibits. There is a way for attorneys to share exhibits on their screen, or third-party services like eDepose can also be used. We're excited that there is more interest in going remote, and we're hopeful that this will provide a practical solution for us all to continue working in the current situation and beyond. Thanks for watching.